Hello and welcome to Swiss Art Biz. This is season two. I'm your host, Tanya Koenig. Now, if you've been a regular VIP at Art Basel, then you've certainly known or heard of her name, Michelle Sondo. She was a global head of VIP relations at the fair and a member of the management board for almost a decade. Prior to that, she had at Christie's uh, in Zurich and is now back in the auction business as managing director of Griesebach Auctions in Switzerland. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to Swiss Art Biz. Hello. Uh, so, Michelle, you've just returned from the 60th Venice Biennale. What was uh, your impression? Listen, I got back kind of full of, full of energy, insp inspiration, and I really love this edition. I've been there been going there for many years and it was an addition which really filled me with joy for one one reason may one of the main reason is that you know the art director the curator adriano pedrosa was one of the he was the first curator from latin america from brazil uh, the title was foreigners everywhere so very kind of enigmatic but i think also uh, there was a lot to say about it, of course, and I thought that was really super cool. And also you had a lot of lot more kind of national pavilions from Africa. You know, my love for Africa and my interest there. There were 11, 11 um, African countries present there. Some were for the first time, like Benin, Ethiopia and Tanzania. It was dense, of course. There's so much to see. There's so many things you don't get to see, so you also have to deal with that. Um, but it was a good. I mean, going back in June, actually. Mm, great. And now you mentioned um, Adriano Pedrosa. He is not only the first Latin American curator, but also the first openly queer uh, creator of the Venice uh, Biennale of the history. And you also mentioned the theme uh, "Foreigners Everywhere," which relates kind of to foreigners, but also to indigenous art, queer art, uh, to marginalized in general. Now, how could you feel that you also alluded a little bit with uh, the African art. Yeah, yeah. So so all those topics, you could really see them everywhere, you know. It was a big focus on indigenous artists, on, on I mean, for instance, you had Jeffrey Gibson representing USA, uh, first indigenous uh, person as well. Or you had Julien Creuset, um, who was representing France. So there was a lot of these crossover, you know, it was not that a German artist representing Germany or kind of a Swiss artist representing Switzerland. So there was this kind of, I think, this need also to break through those those silos, you know, to those, those those very rigid concepts. And you also had, like, for instance, the Polish pavilion, while you had Ukrainian artists there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I thought it shook up a bit everything, and I thought that was really interesting to also give voices to... I hate to say this underrepresented, but also give voices to, to to regions, to to areas, to to different people. You know, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, so that was, I thought that was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. You know, and the topic foreigners everywhere, is. I mean, Pedrosa keeps saying it in his interviews. I mean, he also feels very often a foreigner. You know, but it's also you can look at from a different angle. Angle being a foreigner is not always. Um, is is not the doesn't always have this negative connotation either you know so it had something also positive we are all in together right mm -hmm. because that's what we share or mm -hmm. so i thought it was very joyful very colorful of course and lots of beads lots, lots of textiles but it was a joyful beautiful gathering in a way. I'm sure you met uh, many uh, people, many friends as well. Uh, what did they say? Did, you know, did yeah, they so, like... Yeah, so it felt like, like I mean, all my friends, you know, from Africa were there. And and uh, I think the general consensus was it's great. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you had voices saying, wow, but that's kind of how you're going, you know, voices not really being being so moved by these topics, you know, and, and, and so there was a bit of everything, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but that's what the art world does. It's always criticizing. It's always challenging. It's always wondering why. And, and, uh, 
and of course also this feeling of being left out and of course you know if you look at Africa with 54 countries you only had 11 countries mm. there so it's still kind of Africa being this huge continent region it's still kind of a small number but mm -hmm. I mean it raised from 7 2007 I think to 11 mm. today I mean I think it could be it could do better mm -hmm. but it's the it's it's the same for other regions obviously now on that note i must mention that you're a board member of the lagos biennale in nigeria uh, as well one of uh, the many positions that you also hold but we will talk about africa yes. uh, in a minute uh, just to stay at the venice biennale now archie moore the australian uh, artist actually won the golden lion uh, this year um did you see the pavilion and, and what was your impression there so i saw it and uh, um, I was actually blown away. So Archie is a First Nations Australian. So that was also a first uh, in a way. Um, listen, he, so he drew up basically the whole map of his ancestors going back 65,000 years, you know, so over more than 2,000 generations. And it was just huge map on the walls um, where it was like a family tree and that was i thought that was very moving it's about identity and where you come from i thought it was really very very strong mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so but that was not my favorite pavilion yeah. which was so my favorite pavilion i'm happy you're asking <laughs> my favorite pavilion was the egyptian pavilion oh, why so the egyptian pavilion was represented by wail shaki mm -hmm born in uh, Alessandria, well known to the art world, he's been around for many years, and he created an opera, a film, and it was on a, the, the topic was drama 1866, if I'm not mistaken, basically that year, that time when England bombarded Alessandria, Alexandria, that's where he comes from, and it was done in such a subtle beautiful, very aesthetical way. It was an opera, you know, in eight acts. So I thought, you know, videos is always kind of tricky in a, at a Biennale because you never really have time because you want to see as much as possible. And I sat in there throughout the, the from the beginning to the end, I was mesmerized. So really beautiful and moving. And what I liked about his his work. I mean, I also watched then videos and interviews with him and is also, he explains how this all came, you know, kind of all ca happened, you know, uh, the, 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 the Egyptian government getting in touch with him in September, you know, just a few months before the opening and all the struggles and all the challenge he had, you know, explaining that he, all the people basically, there were I don't know how many hundreds of people on the on the on the on the cut being being part of the cast, you know, and uh, little budgets, of course, he had to do also the fundraising. But it was just these these voices as well, you know. It was an opera, of course, and explaining all this 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 moment in history. And what I liked about it is basically it was a very regional moment but which had a very big big and strong impact of course so very moving and and um and powerful you know so uh that was one of my favorites obviously i have a few more zimbabwean pavilion also being one of my favorites but i'm very connected with with the people behind it with rafael chikukwa or the artist there was the estonian pavilion uh, it was basically the pavilion which was the furthest away, you know, from the epicenter. So you really had to want to go there. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what I like doing, mm -hmm. you know, kind of really going there where not everybody shows mm -hmm. up, you know. Mm -hmm. So that was also beautiful. Or the Nigerian pavilion was, uh, was one of the positions with Inka Shonibare, Nigerian, mm -hmm. uh, important Nigerian UK artist. Uh, that was also extraordinary what he put together, you know, so I could go on and yeah, on. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell, uh, but it's good to hear. So for uh, anyone visiting Venice Biennale to make sure, for instance, to sit down in the Egyptian uh, pavilion and take that time yes. for that yeah. uh, movie. 
Now, like the Venice Biennale, also your background is quite um, cross-cultural, uh, one could say. Uh, you were uh, born in Zimbabwe to Swiss parents, I guess. Yes. Yeah, to Swiss parents. Yeah. Um, then you studied East Asian art history and Sinology at the University of Zurich and in Beijing. You spent many uh, many years in China and Taiwan. Uh, so all this happened actually before uh, you entered the art world. What was your idea when you chose that subject, um, when you picked East Asian art yeah. and, and Sinology? Did you know that you wanted to go to the art world? Not at all. No, 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 no. So it was all, I, so born, like, as you said, born in Zimbabwe. My mother was born in Zimbabwe too. Mm. Um, I ended up and I lived in Niger, Nayami as well. So we, 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 I think in my, until my, my 20s, I moved 17 times, you know. Wow. And um, so I ended up doing my, finishing my high school in Neuchâtel. That's mm -hmm. where my father comes from. That's where I have, my name is from, Sondo. And I suddenly had this idea, I want to go to China and learn Chinese. But it was like, you know, it was like suddenly you wake up and you have a vision. And, and then I got a job offer, which allowed me to go to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first touch point, because until then it was more Africa, mm -hmm. Europe. And so it was my first touch point in Asia. Mm -hmm. And I was I was 19 years old. I got there and I got a job as a as a as a French teacher in a school in a tiny village, Taitung, on the east coast of Taiwan. Um, and after three months, I just thought, wow, that's this language just sounds just so beautiful mm -hmm. and so enigmatic. And I needed this kind of this deep dive into a new culture away from my family. I have an identical twin sister. Uh -huh. So it was, you know, when you when you it has its beauty, but it's also kind of you need to find your own identity and find out who you are, what you want. So I needed this deep dive into this new, completely new culture, you know. And uh, after three months working there, I was kind of the only, almost the only foreigner there, foreigner, yeah. who, and you couldn't speak a word of Chinese. So I really, I, I started learning it like a, like a maniac and I loved it, you know, and after one and a half years, I, I, I was quite fluent mm -hmm. and, and then I traveled to China back then, you know, it was the end of the eighties. Um, I decided to travel through China and back then of course it was a different China mm. than we know now mm. it was literally like 10 10 and so years after the end of the cultural revolution in 76 so it was a very different China but I I don't know I was very I felt very connected and uh, I think I found myself there mm. and I remain very connected mm -hmm. to China to Taiwan to Asia mm. overall you know I feel very at home mm. there it's interesting that you say you f you find uh, found yourself in a total strange place. Yeah. Yes. One could say. Yeah, I think I needed that. You know, I had no references mm -hmm. there. You know, and this is what I yeah it was um, was an interesting experience and and journey, basically, which which kind of yeah which which uh, was the beginning of a of you know my my career you know and and. Uh, mm -hmm adult life in a way and you said that you basically were a stranger in that world um did you have the same feeling growing up in in africa in these different places yeah. you were also so i was i was always feeling a stranger be it in harare or be it in Miami, niger or even being it in zurich so i i decided to after this two years of china and taipei and taiwan and hong kong I decided to move to Zurich, you know, which was also a city I hadn't, I didn't know. It felt like a foreigner back then as well. But I kind of like that because it gives you, in German, you'd say certain Narrenfreiheit. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why I was saying at the beginning, I think it's, it's uh, of course, it's complicated for, for in many areas, right? But mm -hmm. for me, it was like, uh, so I felt like a foreigner, but I also... I'm a bit like a chameleon, you know. I can I can very quickly um, 
adapt. be part of something, something, adapt and mingle and blend in. But that so, probably comes uh, from how you grew up. I think so. And having, you know, mother, who was, of course, her parents were, were, were Swiss, but she grew up in Zimbabwe. This father from Neuchâtel, who was, you know, I think so. But I, th I think it's also part of my DNA of, of part of being a twin, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um you have to yeah it's 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 interesting definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah very much so when i came to zurich i decided i wanted to really study chinese mm -hmm. language so mm -hmm. sinology and um, how old were you at the time then so then i was 22 yeah mm -hmm. um and i thought it was very brave to do it in zurich i could have done it in 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 geneva you know that was closer to one of my homes, um, but back then you could only study sinology as a as a main main subject, you know, in Zurich, mm -hmm. you know. And then very quickly I thought, no, but if you do sinology, it's you have to decide it's politology or it's 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 philology or it's history or it's. And then there was this 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 uh, Southeast Asian South Asian um, art history class, you know, which was which the institute was at the Riedberg Museum, a museum I've always loved, you know, kind of or started loving back then. And so that's what I did. And I very quickly then thought art is what I want. Uh -huh. I think that's kind of where I feel the most comfortable. But, but how did that happen? I mean, you had an interest in art already before. Not really, oh. but because, you know, art, I mean, I'm sure you're familiar with, with the Chinese Shang Shui Hua landscape mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. with the, it's, it's so interconnected with the culture, with, with the life mm -hmm. in a way, you know, so I didn't, I didn't kind of back then think, okay, I'm moving from studying a language to going to the you know, the art for me was all kind of very interconnected, mm -hmm. you know, so it felt like I felt more at home there, maybe, you know, and so that brought me on this kind of into the art world in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was studying, I, I, I had this big chance to get a job at Koller Auktionen, mm -hmm. which is the biggest auction house in Switzerland. Um, and I very quickly was able, I was entrusted the whole department of Asian. During um, your studies. During my studies, you know, classical Asian art, you know, so I would cover Japan, Korea, but also Indonesia and all of that and started doing all the cataloging and doing the auctions. And so that was quite exciting, you know, when you study at the Riedberg Museum, everything's a bit abstract, you know, it's kind of uh, musealish in a way, and then, you know, working for auction house, so that was my first kind of uh, experience, is you get to touch these objects and you get to, and then you get also, you get to talk to people who, of course, f have more, far more, more knowledge, you know, you know, you talk to people who are really kind of, their focus is, uh, is the Tang Dynasty Celadons or the Qing Dynasty or Qianlong's uh, blue and white you know porcelain so i i like this kind of exchange you know with people who have deep knowledge in something and so i became this all-rounder you know mm -hmm. covering all the all the areas in in asia in a way mm -hmm. and during that time you never had like uh, uh, you were entrusted with with the big task you never had the feeling of uh, what exactly am i doing uh, like because you've been in touch with people that knew so much about the subject, did you also sometimes have this complex, how do you call it? Um, not the, like a, you don't know enough, what am I doing here? Yeah, it's a good point, absolutely. I, I reached that point with a bit of a, a frustration thinking, okay, I'll never have that, you know, I sh or maybe that was my only regret in life is, that I should have gone to, you know, I studied in Beijing for a year, uh, but that was not enough, you know, and I should have gone to SOAS in London, you know, I should have really kind of stayed on that part of expert, mm -hmm. you know, but I thought it was, yeah, I had then my family and, and I thought, no, maybe I just need, I need to make another move, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did in the early 2000s. I left, kind of left behind um, 
auction house business or being this expert of of antiquities mm -hmm. i mean it was really antiquities and then and thought okay what am i going to do you know and then i got uh, an incredible job opportunity and that was basically my entry point into the contemporary art world you know i didn't study uh classic i didn't study art history mm -hmm. you know western art history you know and then i i started working for a private collection of Latin American art. Mm -hmm. You probably know it. It was Daros Latin America. They had a museum at the Leuvenbroi, and they were building this amazing collection of Latin, contemporary Latin American art. So that brought me in through Latin America, basically into the contemporary Western art world mm -hmm. in a way. And a new uh, continent after Africa. It was Asia. absolutely new continent. So I started learning Spanish. I traveled a bit there, Cuba, Havana. That were, were my favorite places, you wow. know. And and uh, yeah, so that was where I started, you know. From um, and then very quickly, you know, I I mean, I I, I was running a gallery at some point. Uh, there was a time, you know, at the Lessingstrasse in Zurich where a lot of suddenly galleries from mainly from Germany started to open up satellite galleries. So I was running one of those galleries with a colleague and that put me in touch, of course, with with um, with young, you know, artists, uh, mainly from Europe, of course. And uh, and then I moved on to Christie's. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so I feel like this all just happened. It was a coincidence, but you had to be open for it. Exactly. So that's kind of something which had, I think is a little bit the red thread in my life. It's it's because I'm a very open person, mm -hmm. you know, and I like challenges and I have no fear, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, when I'm 19 going to China back, it was in the late 80s, you know, and I was also... There, you know, in eighty nine with the Tiananmen uh, massacre and all of that, I'm I'm really not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not scared, you know. Um, and so, and open for, and maybe it was not so much my career at the forefront of mm -hmm. things, you know. I was more thinking, okay, what's next, you know? And then there was this opportunity at Christie's, and my son was young and I thought okay some kind of stability you know and so Christie's, you became a mother in between before even before that but I needed to mm -hmm. yeah so I had other <laughs> um and so uh and it was just perfect you know and I run the the the, the Zurich branch Christie's branch for yeah seven, seven years, years as yeah. well uh -huh. and that was kind of also an interesting times because that was the those were the times where suddenly there was this big huge focus on on chinese artists oh. remember and um and because i had known i had known some of them you know back in the early 90s you know and it's kind of like i like it when things kind of come in 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 you know there's the loop closes yeah. you know so in those 2000 there was this big hype around Chinese contemporary art, which was great, you know, kind of they've been doing art since centuries, you know, but there was this interest. It's a bit like the art world functions, right? It always needs something new, you know, and it's like trophy hunting. And uh, but so when I in my role there, I mean, I was running the office. I was also doing some business getting for 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 the Hong Kong uh you know Hong Kong Christie's you know or Shanghai and stuff like that so it was kind of it made sense also that I was in that role because I had this background mm -hmm. of Chinese I knew I knew the culture you know I really I knew the whole history you know and uh and that also allowed me to have beautiful relationships, you know, with with people in Hong Kong, mm. Shanghai, Taipei, because, you know, back then it was a lot of people who were just interested in quick wins, you know. Mm -hmm. But then suddenly, you know, you you I'm I was in front of people who realized that, you know, I used to I was able to write four thousand Chinese characters, mm -hmm. you know, and I was very wow. fluent, you know. So that also gave me some kind of um, 
what's the word, you know, some kind of, uh, oh, I'm blanking now. But it made kind of the exchange, you know, kind of a bit more fluid mm -hmm. and not just one-sided, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Because you were able also to understand their because you, you yeah. spoke Chinese. Yeah. Uh, Legitimation. Yes. That's kind of yeah. what I yeah. was looking for. Yeah. 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 Uh, now you mentioned that the suddenly there was this trend for Chinese yeah. uh, art. Uh, art Basel Hong Kong was inaugurated in 2013. Yes. Um, so the international interest in East Asian art, uh, contemporary art, is relatively new. One could say, yeah. I mean, it depends how you define new, but mm -hmm. it's 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 basically it's like twenty twenty five mm -hmm. years, yeah. absolutely. So it's a one generation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's new and it's not new. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. What yeah. do you see as the major contribution from East Asian artists to the to the art world? Yeah. So I think kind of it really opened up a lot of doors, you know. And it suddenly made this art world kind of a bit more open, diverse, you know, and it's like you open up the windows and you let some fresh air in, you know. So I thought, yeah, there was a lot of, um, it was, it was, it was fascinating in a way, you know, to see how suddenly, of course, you know, Uli Sieg, mm -hmm. he's been around for many years. You have, you have Osmaile as well. So, or, or Lorenzo Helbing from Shang Art. So these guys have been, had been doing a lot already for many years, you know, mm -hmm. but suddenly I thought it was just, it opened up a new, a new chapter in a way in this contemporary art world. It was so Eurocentric and so, American centric, you know, so suddenly you had new hubs mm -hmm. emerging, you know, and I thought it just made it just more fascinating and the dialogues, the exchanges and um, yeah, and what remains obviously when you look back and yeah, I was in, in February or was it in March? March? I was in Hong Kong. I think yeah. you were there too. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah. And I was so happy to be back in a way I had not been there last time it was 2020 just before COVID hit the world and for me it was a bit like going home you mm -hmm. know kind of connecting again mm -hmm. with my friends I'd only been seeing over Zoom you know mm -hmm. thank you Zoom you know it really saved us during those mm -hmm. difficult years so it was um, it was yeah it was it was beautiful mm -hmm. and to see what still what still is around you know everybody's saying the market is slowing down a lot of people have left Hong Kong and but I think that's kind of that's one side of the things mm -hmm. but what I felt is also a city which is buzzing and you have you know the M plus museum on Kalung opened up you know and it's just an extraordinary space of mm -hmm. exchange of educational space next door you have the the Gugong mm -hmm. the palace museum mm -hmm. which also opened up and so it's such a rich city mm -hmm. of, uh, and I was also really happy to see, you know, all the people showing up, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. because, yeah, there's a lot of people just follow trends, you know, and movements and, and dynamics, but there's a, lo a lot of people showed up, mm -hmm. you know, and, and galleries, you know, artists and, and collectors, obviously, mm -hmm. as well. So I was, I was, I was happy and positive okay. you know, it's a huge city it's yeah. still a huge region you know and it's um it's not because so many people are leaving of course there are issues obviously but i'd rather not go into them now. <laughs> uh, but there is um lots happening as okay. well. Yeah, that's interesting what you say, because as you mentioned, uh, I was there for, too for our Basel Hong Kong in March. And I think the last time I was in Hong Kong, it was, I don't even remember, probably 2016 or so. So really long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the city looks the same to me. Um, but however, when I was at, at the fair, I had the impression, I mean, I didn't see everything, obviously, but I had the impression that a lot looked very decorative um not so provocative and i also heard from a sales representative of a gallery a swiss gallery she told me that sales were really slow in yeah, that yeah. week so you know having worked for almost 10 years in fun fun art fair, art fair oh. it really depends to who you talk 
mm. because I spoke to galleries who did great, mm. who were really happy. Western galleries, Asian galleries, you know. Obviously, I also had that kind of feedback. But at the end of the day, you never really know unless you have the you have the spreadsheet with all the results, but you don't, right? So I think it was, yeah, it was, um, yeah, we will see into, you know, next year who's coming back or, um, yeah, it's always tricky. <laughs> now, I can imagine also um, that if you have relations already in Asia, it's easier for you um, to sell your art or you have your connections. And yes, to, and it, that's it all depends on absolutely. that. Absolutely. Especially in Asia, probably. Yeah, and that's, I have to say, there's so many galleries, you know, Western galleries who really stepped up there, you know. They were not just coming one week during the Art Basel week and, and, and trying to sell their art, you know, or make new connections. I mean, there's a lot of these galleries have spent time in China or in Asia, you know, building their relationships. Relationships are key, right? Mm -hmm. And so... And I think that's probably when you talk to them, you'll find out that that's just very important. You can't just show up for a week and think that you, uh, especially it's different cultures as well. Remember when when Art Basel was there, there's a lot of galleries in the West They were so annoyed because an Asian collector would go up and ask about the price immediately and, and things like that. But I think they all learned from each other, you mm -hmm. know, that how to do things or how to to accept that you don't do things like they they use chopsticks to eat and we don't, you know, that kind of this, this I thought, it always a bit of common sense. Cultures mm -hmm. are, are mm -hmm. different. And, and that behaviors and behaviors uh... and and uh, so I, I thought, you know, after, yeah, there's this. Uh, positive changes mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. absolutely no because uh, there was also this article in the NZZ saying that sl sales were slow and Chinese rich obviously are, are getting poor due to many reasons also yeah. real estate it's it's funny you know it's like somebody says something and that per you know it's like people a lot of people don't realize they're just repeating they're repeating what they heard, mm -hmm. you know, and it's based on what, you know. Mm -hmm. It's so difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had over 200 galleries and the halls were full, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but are maybe sales slower anyhow throughout the yes. world with high interest rates, et cetera? Absolutely. So inflation. I think that's, that's, that, that's something I, I would absolutely uh underline yes it is it is i mean look at the the state of the world we only came out of COVID, like you know like a year and a half ago we're still feeling kind of the 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 you know kind of the results or the nachwehen in mm -hmm. german do you think there will be kind of a shift in in asia because i it's also something i heard maybe you know our basel hong kong might pick another city i'm just yeah, yeah. putting it out there so those rumors have been around for many years <laughs> i don't know yeah. i don't know but uh, seoul is like also bustling absolutely yeah. absolutely and tokyo and taipei mm -hmm. i mean this week there's the tai ta tang dai mm -hmm. in taipei mm -hmm. uh i know for a fact that for many of those the partners of the uh, dang dai they love they love Taipei. It's mm -hmm. just kind of it's a it's just a, a buzzing city with a lot of collectors. I was going to say serious collectors, but it's true. I don't know what mm -hmm. um, I don't have that crystal ball, mm -hmm. and uh, but I'm also curious, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, so you've mentioned the M Plus Museum in Hong Kong, also uh, this big museum built by Herzog and de Meuron, uh, that holds this big collection by Uli Sik. A Swiss um, collector, contemporary Chinese contemporary art collector who donated so many pieces. I thought, yeah, it was wonderful. It yeah. was amazing. Remember Mahjong in Bern? Mm -hmm. That show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just really happy to to see a lot of those artworks there in Hong Kong. I loved it, and obviously, I saw Uli there with mm -hmm. Rita Sieg. and uh, it just felt so so good. And seeing all these masters. Um, there, you know, in that context, and uh, was it a good move so that he picked Hong Kong to donate his his pieces? Well, that's absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I know there's a lot of other, you know, kind of uh, ways of looking at it. But I think it was uh, it was great. It was great. 
and you and as a fact you know they have so many visitors coming mm. you know yeah it was and full. they have great you know shows there was great other shows there which it's it's important mm. yeah absolutely mm. um maybe to go back to your career you you've been seven years with christie's then you moved uh, to art basel as head of vip relations uh, why that move so it's uh, back then it felt like you know seven years is like my my cycle you know <laughs> and so i was approached by art basel um asking me if i'd be interested in in uh in you know in heading the vip program globally for so they approached the you yes yes mm. yes yes and uh i felt very happy that day you know i thought yes why not uh, because this brings me like on another platform on a, or to another level in a way you know um and and taking care of globally of the vip department its its program you know was it was like kind of it was like a natural thing i have my background with i mean my relation with africa my relation with asia you know and latin america and it was kind of working for this global platform um you know was was going to allow me to kind of build even more bigger networks you know and bring everything together you know and my understanding for different cultures my my affinity with many of them um it seemed like the perfect move you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was. Mm -hmm. It was an extraordinary journey. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I mean, art fairs um, are often also criticized for being too materialistic. Um, however, they're still cultural bridges. So how much do you see your, you know, your career as a role as a as a humanist? Okay, that's a very interesting question. So I see myself as somebody who's building bridges, mm -hmm. you know, and and. Uh, somebody who's, who 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 loves creating communities you know so that's basically what i did at the beginning of my career at at art basel you have to figure out a way of staying relevant you know and working for three shows of course back then it was hong kong uh, uh miami beach and basel um and yet being this very swiss basel company so it was really through this extraordinary team I had of over 30 VIP representatives who represent, who still are representing, you know, Japan, Taiwan, Australia, Brazil, Mexico City, and of course, all the important hubs in Europe. It was this kind of, it was, gr it was also building a community amongst us, because in, if you want to be effective and you want to kind of because our role was basically to make our galleries happy because the galleries are the are the, the clients, clients of mm -hmm. Art Basel mm -hmm. in a way. And so how do you make them happy? Of course, you you bring as many new collectors from all the regions because they expect, of course, to have after this whole huge boom in Asia, they were expecting very quickly to have the Asian collectors come to Basel. But then obviously in Miami Beach, there was also that expectation to have not only the Latin American collectors, but also keep having the Europeans and, of course, also the Chinese. So how do you do that? So it was kind of, it was with this machine I had, these people who who are based in these regions and know what's happening in Sao Paulo or Rio, you know, and, and know, knows who are the new stakeholders, who are your new collectors, and make sure that they are aware and they, they are attracted, you know, to 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 visiting us and they are given access that's a big topic right mm -hmm. access and who doesn't and things like that but then i went on building these communities um basically not everybody wants the same thing right i mean it's it's so we started with a vip weekend program so for people who don't necessarily have access to all the galleries or who don't have have uh, uh, or who like to also move around in a group, you know. So we started building these communities, and then we 
did something extraordinary in 2017. I don't know if you remember that, but it was Art Basel City, mm -hmm. so you have this program. And our first city was Buenos Aires. There was really this cultural program of immersion and of a collaboration with this with Buenos Aires mm -hmm. as in a, in a very important cultural city, of course. And that was also the beginning of a big adventure in a way is move away, move out of this booth kind of context and then kind of use the expertise of Art Basel, but also kind of exchange and work together with the city. So that was kind of, that's where we started also building these communities who would travel with us. We also did kind of a big, 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 um, uh, a big uh, trip to Shanghai. You, you also start realizing that you, you, in order to stay relevant, in order to, you also have to have this human size, this approachable kind of attitude. Is it so, something that you would say is sometimes not, you know, the art world is sometimes wants to be approachable, but does is not? Or? Well, I think you know, if you talk to young collectors mm -hmm. and and. I think they also have their challenges when they go to a big gallery. It can be very intimidating. So I think we helped through our program and, and exchange. We helped kind of mitigate that. You mentioned our Basel cities. Um, our next guest is going to be Marie Levy, who actually was part of that project. Yes. So we talk about that. But it, it there was just one city in the yes. end. It was just Buenos Aires. Yeah. But you had the plan of doing it we, in, yes. in other cities, yeah. right? There was a big plan. I mean, in the pipeline, we had a lot of cities who were interested. And then, yeah. Um, it was also COVID, no? I it was just a, before COVID. There were kind of, it was just not the time to move ahead with that kind of program. Mm. I don't know, maybe it ha will happen again, but back then and mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, felt safer to, to let that go. Mm. Uh, what was the most rewarding aspect of working at Art Basel? Yeah. So listen, in those nine years, it was basically meeting all these extraordinary people, you know, be it collectors, be it um, gallerists, be it artists, be it institutional people or the partners of, of, of Art Basel, you know. And all of this, you know, is one big ecosystem and all of this can only happen if we, we collaborate and we do it together. So I think It was really meeting all these people, kind of creating this huge web of extraordinary people, experts. And it was also through those years where I really wanted to bring Art Basel closer to the African continent, mm -hmm. you know, so to close that loop. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was before the sudden rush and trend of of African art, contemporary art was way before, you know, so I organized together with my, my, my colleagues, we organized events in Dakar during the Dakar Biennial. We were 2017 in Cape Town with Art Basel, the, with Art Basel when Seitz Mokka opened up this, this extraordinary contemporary art museum. The only, I mean, one of the, one of the few, right, where it's just this in, That was set up or, or in this in these silos and we were there you know we did an event so we we did a lot you know um, and that allowed me of course also to create new ties and build new alliances and get closer to be it Nigeria be it Kenya be it Harare Zimbabwe Dakar South Africa uh, Morocco um, so that was basically What I loved about it, I was asked to join, I mean, sit on different advisory boards mm -hmm. now, the Lagos Biennial, which took pl place this year in February, or Zeitz Mokka, I'm one of the founding members of the Global Council of Zeitz Mokka, together with Inca, Shoni Bare, for instance, which I just mentioned, or Julie Meretu, or some other extraordinary people, artists, collectors from the continent. And I'm supporting the Art Harare um, uh, Fair. Uh, and also, you know, so that that was basically, that was, it opened a lot of doors. Now you mentioned all these uh, events in, in Africa and on the African continent. 
Um, what is happening there right now? How do you see the art market or the art world um, there? Well, is... it's, it's, I mean, it's always been there, right? Yeah. I mean, that's also something, you know, we, we laugh a lot, you know, <laughs> kind of, wow. Uh, but art has always been there, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, but now the attention is mm -hmm. there and you do have more of the African galleries participating in 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 fairs in Europe or in America or also in Asia. There's much more cross pollination in a way and crossover, and there's a lot going on. But of course, every country has its challenges. You know, like if I can take Zimbabwe as a as an example. I mean, the Zimbabwean pavilion. They've been going to Zimbabwe since two, to Venice Biennial since 2006, 17. Mm. And, uh, but they don't have a lot of fun. So mm. four days before the opening of the Zimbabwean Pavilion in, in Venice, of course, they were not sure was it going to happen, you know? So there's wow. hundreds of kind of challenges, you know, the infrastructures, the, 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 yeah, so it's 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 buzzing. I mean, I was I was in in Nairobi not not long ago, or Lagos, or or uh, Cape Town. So there's there's a lot lots is happening. Who goes onto these um, events? Is it more approachable if maybe the like it's it's new there and 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 set up maybe you know, less sophisticated? Do oh, no, it can be very sophisticated, mm -hmm. you know, but if I could take Lego Spaniel, for instance, it was open to the public. It was like a festival, you mm -hmm. know, you had music, you had dances, you had performances. So it was, and it, it was taking place in the middle of the city. Mm -hmm. It's very accessible mm -hmm. in a way, absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Going back to your previous question, you know, like end of May, uh, at the Kunstmuseum in Basel, mm -hmm. very important museum. There's going to be a show on uh, a retrospective on figurative African mm -hmm. painting, which was which comes from the Zeitz Mokka, you know, Koyo Kua is the director, and this show is traveling and it's coming in a few weeks to Basel, wow. you know. So mm -hmm. there is this interest. No, and 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 which it's about time you know? yeah yeah absolutely yeah. yeah yeah absolutely now from your experience at at the fair um how do you see it going um continuing it in the long term the whole fairs the whole fair business yes well, listen, that's also a, diff a difficult question. You know, what I see, there are more and more fairs taking mm. place, you know, uh, like now in Taipei, uh, you know, not long ago it was Brussels. Um, there's just a lot of them, you know. It's also maybe too, too many? I don't know. It's I think time will tell, you know, kind of how much fairs does, does the art world need, you mm. know. It's it's a difficult question. It's uh, you go to these fairs and and you know freeze was didn't ha happen just uh, a few weeks ago, right? Mm -hmm. So there is there's a lot of people going there. If you look at the numbers, you know it's like sixty, eighty, ninety thousand, or ninety thousand mm -hmm. maybe not, but still there is this because fairs are platform right mm -hmm. right of exchange mm -hmm. platform where so many things can happen mm -hmm. you know and where of course you can meet your friends you've not seen for ages mm -hmm. so it, these are perfect places where so many things can happen exchanges where you know you have the talks program which are most of the time extraordinary mm -hmm. and and it just draws a lot of people mm -hmm. a lot of attention so yeah or do you think it might be become more regional? Maybe that's what a lot of people say. It could well be, you know, mm -hmm. that it's, uh, you know, because there's there's been this m m melt, you know, mixing, you know, kind of maybe, yeah, maybe suddenly there was will be will. Tr I mean, apparently after COVID, we thought that we'd be traveling less. I mean, I don't think that's really happening. No, it's back um, to uh, so before. Yeah, and there's this whole world around us, right? Which is also, for, I mean, it's, uh, areas or is falling apart in a way. So, so uh, yeah, 
it's a uh, kind of crazy to think about traveling and then also seeing these blocks being built at the same time yeah. and and exactly we're shifting apart yeah yeah uh, but at the same time we're we've never been so neat close yeah true that's what and that's basically also what art can do right uh it can really uh it brings people together mm. um be it in the art market be it kind of in the in the not in the market outside of it uh between you know when i left art basel and i joined grisebach mm. um i i was i was asked by the icrc international committee of the red cross which is the biggest humanitarian organization in the world to join them and try and build a bridge you know where art and humanity could be connected where art could serve as a as a tool i thought that was kind of an extraordinary opportunity here again you know where i could see how much art could really do or how art could really support different causes that was kind of also something i i loved looking at you know and exploring through the through the eyes of the artist talk talk about this humanitarian the humanitarian crisis which is hit is hitting the world the challenges you know migrations the climate change and all of that so try and see what was what we were capable of doing kind of also create more awareness around these really difficult topics so that was kind of a small intermezzo but nevertheless quite important for me also there again creating communities bringing communities together and through the art really getting 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 communities to get closer to each other you know sadly end of last year uh this this initiative we had to kind of press pause because it was just not the right moment to do this kind of thing yeah. because complex you know kind of because of the of the state of the world because of um yeah uh, it was just not the right moment doesn't mean that we won't pick it up again and because i really believe art has the power not only to connect people to but it connects you to your humanity or to our shared humanity in a way um yes yeah, so now i'm at grisebach mm -hmm. so that also was was beautiful opportunity which was given to me so i'm back in the auction business in the auction business some uh -huh. people say or i've even said it in some interviews back to my roots yes back, exactly yes. <laughs> which so, feels good yeah does it yes uh, i mean at the auction house grisebach is well known for german classical modernism um yeah which is kind of different from uh, from the um, large international and contemporary art at art basel um so is that like a new direction that the auction house is signaling uh, by having you there in yeah. Switzerland? So listen, there's this wish yeah to to become more international, you know, and focus also on the contemporary art as well. Um that was yeah. I mean Zurich is the is the only Riesebach office outside of Germany. So that's kind of uh, I think one of the plans. Mm -hmm. Um and for me working for it's been now four months so it's still fair it feels very fairly new it's working for kind of a an institution who has so much knowledge you know mm -hmm. that's kind of first time i went to meet all my colleagues in berlin i mean there are about in total 80 of them i was really fascinated by the knowledge there is there you know and i remembered what i loved working in an auction house is that you you spend time kind of diving into an area be it the 19th century being the modern or being just one area or contemporary art so i have all these colleagues colleagues kind of who are specialized in these different kind of which i really envy them mm -hmm. because um uh, you're the all-rounder uh, i'm You've still the been... <laughs> all-rounder you know and with my background more like classical <laughs> chinese art you know i'm really kind of a building the bridges uh, i'm building the bridges and my intention in zurich is of course to be a little bit the window towards a more international um 
crowd. I mean, it's I'm not. I mean, Grace Bach's everywhere. I used to have an office in in New York, but it's maybe yeah that focus mm. is it has become important. But nevertheless, Zurich. You've you've been in my offices. It's on the Bahnhofstrasse. It feels like a bit of a living room. So I like this human dimension. And it's really, you know, what doing what I do best is mm. creating communities, bringing people together. Mm. So I intend we don't do auctions in Zurich. So I really intend to collaborate. And I think that's a word or something you you will know you've noticed in Venice as well is. You can't do this on your own anymore. You you can't you it's it's these silos, all of that, it's kind of it's over. You need to collaborate also in a way to create more more fascinating, deeper conversations in a way who 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 can inspire or who can kind of create these étincelles and some magic, you know. So I'm going to collaborate with all my friends across the world, you know, and it's kind of really beautiful that Grisebach is giving me carte blanche here. Mm. So I'll, I'll be starting kind of uh, starting this new series of collaborations and it's going to be with galleries, with artists, with with curators, with private collections, you know, and bring them um, to Zurich in a way. C can you give us a hint of who you're already working yes, with? Yes. So, so one of the one of the that's going to be my first show in on the fifth of jo June. Mm -hmm. Just really, literally um, ahead of our Basel. Ahead of our Basel, but also mainly, you know, kind of during the Zurich Art Weekend, which is also has become such an incredible event of festival in a way everybody's dressing up and getting ready for that time and so my first collaboration will take will be with Kuri Manzuto, mm -hmm. a gallery I love gallery based between Mexico City and New York mm -hmm. and I won't reveal more than that mm -hmm. uh, but it's going to we're going to show some extraordinary artists which again allows me to close the loop because artists from latin america i've known back in my old days mm -hmm. when i was working for daros latin america another show was is going to be with a group of artists from zimbabwe mm -hmm. and uh the, the 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 thing there is that my 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 friend curator Richard Mudariki, he'll be traveling with a suitcase full of art, five different artists. So also kind of small, small sizes, just everything what can fit in a, a suitcase. In a suitcase. That's the idea. That's the idea oh. in a way, but also kind of giving a tour d'horizon of the art scene uh, in Zimbabwe. Mm. And another collaboration is going to be with but I'd rather not reveal too much mm. with a very dear artist friend from Marseille. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so there's an, and also one other project I'm having is with the gallery from Shanghai. Okay. Who will bring artworks from a, from a, an artist who went through the whole cultural revolution, wow. you know, mm -hmm. kind of as part of the Uming the the no name group mm. so i'm bringing all these you know friends to zurich and it's amazing. and uh, yes i'm i'm honestly i'm very excited about yeah, it it sounds incredible you know? yeah and how does that work if it's a collaboration then uh, one can purchase the art yes yeah, so sure. it will really be a case by case mm. sometimes it's going to be a selling exhibition mm. sometimes it's going to just be art just to to create a dialogue, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll have talks around it and really get people to come and visit me mm. in, in, at Grisebach <laughs> on Bahnhofstrasse, you know? uh, like Salon, you'd call it in the past, but it's, it's uh, this idea of pushing that a bit more and, and bringing my friends and um but i mean in the end an auction house is also there to do business so. absolutely <laughs> yes so i won't be doing 10 of them you know a year you know maybe it's going to be three a year depending but i also intend to 
to collaborate with my neighbors. The Bahnhofstrasse mm. has some incredible uh, brands and 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 spaces. The Tonhalle is not far away. Mm. And of course, the Schauspielhaus either, you know, so really create there some 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 new alliances. So also with locations, uh, with institutions that exactly, are exactly yeah. uh, visual arts, but other. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned Tonhalle and Schauspielhaus. Exactly. Who knows? Right. So. So. Uh, but also you have Audemars Piguet not far away. You have Picte. You have mm-hmm. these. Bali is there. Oh, really? A lot the of these brands, brands, fashion brands. Yeah. As well. Who also Style. over the all these years, you know, have started also to collaborate with artists, with mm-hmm. institutions. Mm-hmm. And I think I won't stop, you know, kind of uh, try and, uh, but you're right. My main, my main activity obviously is to, to acquisition and sales, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also, um, growing the brand and, uh, and creating communities and a family around it. Mm-hmm. I like uh, what you said, you won't stop. Is that something that has led you throughout your life? I think so. I think I won't stop. And what I also really enjoy doing is I have a few young people I support, I coach, I'm like a mentor to Mm -hmm. them. And that's also something I won't stop because Mm -hmm. you reach a certain age, you know, you've done so much Mm -hmm. or done a lot, you know, and and, uh, you have a a pack back full, you know, but it's also, I find I, it's also time to me right now. I mean, we all have our cycles is to, to also, um, yeah, to, 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 to share mm-hmm. and to support and to give guidance. That's the beauty maybe of getting, getting older mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and being at Grisebach, it matches also this one, my cycle, you know, in a way where art is at its center. You know, if you look through their catalogs, I mean, you just are amazed. You know, now we also, one of the the sales is going to be a collection of works on paper mm-hmm. uh, belonging to Rudolf Zwerner. Yeah. And then you, you go through this catalog to say, wow, I mean... There's still so much to learn as well. So it's also maybe that what's, which, which is also exciting for me because you feel like you're at the, at the epicenter of a place where there's so much knowledge and expertise. It's kind of beautiful if you just never stop discovering something and, and learning and, uh, and yeah, the, the world is full of secrets, full of beauty as well. Mm. So I see it's a new direction for Griesebach by having you, but it's also a new direction kind of for you personally, as you say, with this cycle that you're mentioning. Yes, exactly. Sounds very exciting um, to hear also all the projects that that you're planning. Um, So we're definitely going to keep an eye on that. And and everyone else who is interested uh, shall also check out the website probably. And of course, uh, you also find Michel Sondo on Instagram, where you also take people um, on your journey. Um, and of course, you also find Swiss Art Biz on Instagram. Um, Misha Sondo, thank you very much for sharing all these insights and a little bit how, how you went into the art world and, and what you're planning. And um, best of luck. Thank you, Tanya. It was a very special moment. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, you can listen to Swiss Art Biz on your favorite podcast platform and watch the videos on YouTube. And this podcast was co-produced by Marcel Martin and a shot at a Tablecast Studios by Christoph Sobmanowski in Zurich. Thank you very much for listening and uh, see or hear you next time. Bye-bye.